Hello. Thank you for watching Scandal in Your Life. My name is Scandal. And since you just let me into your life, I'm going to let you into a little bit of mine. Today we're going to talk about the word doldger. What it means and what it means to be a doldger in the New York prison system. A doldger is somebody that uh, that thinks they're a soldier. You have a hierarchy when it, when it comes to, to, the, to the hood and when it comes to jails. You know, you have the, the upper echelon and you have the soldiers that really put in work, and then you have the one underneath. A doja is somebody that feels that they're a soldier because they know a couple of people that actually put work in, they know some of the higher ups, and they're spoken to. People speak to them and they act like they're all right. But they don't have the respect of a soldier. A soldier is somebody that will put in work and is respected by the leaders. A doja is somebody that just gets sunned. And by sunned, I mean they just get told what to do, when to do it. It doesn't make sense, they just do it. As opposed to a crash dummy. A crash dummy is a doja with, with, with no no thought process. They just do. They're told to do something, they just do it. They can be in jail and somebody will just tell them, hey, go punch the captain in the face. They'll go punch the captain in the face, knowing that they're going to get beat down by the rest of the, the COs, and they're going to go to the box for no reason. They just crash them. They do stuff for no reason. But a doja is not quite to that level. So one example of a doja, I had a friend of mine. His name was Ray, young guy. We used to um, live in a group home together. And um, he left the group home, you know, he was living his life. Then he called the house and, um, you know, rumor has it that somebody let him hold one of them things, right? And um, he was supposed to give it back at a certain time. He had to do what he had to do, give it back. And um, a day, a week goes by, he doesn't return it. All right. So now people are checking for him, but they can't find him. Then he calls the house one time and I happen to pick up the phone. So I'm talking to him, I'm like, yo, son, what's good? Where you been at, man? What's, what's going on? You know, people looking for you. He's like, yeah, scandal, you know, um, I got locked up. I'm on the island. You're on the island for what? I got caught with that thing. Kept his mouth shut, though. He stood tall. All right, because, you know, the first thing police do, where'd you get it? You know, tell me you found it. That's what everyone else does. I found it. I don't know. No knowledge. But anyway, so he's in there. And he had a hard time at first. You know, he said they had him in herb court, which is a bunch of people on both sides of him. And he has to walk through the building. They're slapping him up in the head. You know, I guess that's in the, in the adolescence. I guess that's the four building. Um, and then he's like, oh, yeah, but I'm cool with, I'm cool with them now. Now they, they treat me good. I'm like, all right, you know, that's what's up. You, you put work in? Like, like, what happened? He's like, nah, they got me um, bringing in some, some, some weed. All right. Um, you getting money? You getting paid? You getting money with them? Yeah, how you bringing it in? He's like, all right, so what I do is um, they get some chick to come see me. All right, this sounds good right there. He's like, and um, she's bringing in the loonies, the balloons, and the balloons and stuff for weed. All right, all right, so what's up? He's like, so before the visit, you know, I, 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 I grease my asshole up. You know, I'm a little skeptical now. Like, uh, is this something that you was doing before? But all right, you know, so be it. So he greases his asshole up. And then he takes the grease, more grease, and puts it behind his ear for the visit. Then he goes on a visit. However, she gets it to him, he gets the grease behind his ear, rubs on a balloon, stuffs it. Um, it's called boofing. And boofing is hiding stuff in your asshole. That's what people, people tape up razors and boof them in their ass and tape up drugs and boof them in their ass and do all that kind of stuff. Me, I've never boofed anything, but you know, that's just me. Um, all right, seems a bit extra but if you get money out of it just what you want to do this is jail you got to do what you got to do all right so be it i'm like so you getting bread with them he's like nah so hold on so you're not getting bread so what's going on he's like nah nah you know once in a while they let me um smoke with them so you stuffing weed and balloons up your asshole and sometimes they let you smoke that's a doja move son so that's one example of being a doja. Makes no sense to me. If you think it's worth it out there, you let me know. If you think you're getting to smoke with somebody once in a while after you put on all, all that work and you're taking a risk and you get to smoke sometimes, you let, if you think it's good, you let me know. I think it's stupid, but that's just me. That's one example of a doja. I had another boy, Trini dude, who was up north now. This is um, Groveland. And he's sitting there, it's cool dude, whatever. We, we used to politic all the time. And, um... Like he was already going through stress. Like he had his girl's name tattooed on his chest, and then she ended up leaving him. And this, this big bowl is across his chest. He's like, "Oh, it's all right, cause I know another girl with the same name." Nah, son, that's, that's not how that works. You can tell me what you want to tell me. You crying in the cell at night. 
But um, he's somebody, he was cool with some people from a certain set. And he wasn't part of any team, any set, anything like that. But he was cool with some people. So here comes the Okie Dog. Dude's like, yo, here, you hold my banger. And if you need it, banger is a weapon. You hold my gun. It, it, it's, it's a knife. It's a weapon that is what you call a gun in jail. So like, yo, hold my banger. And if you need it, you could use it. But when I need it, make sure you get it to me. So he's being used as a holster. And that's what it's called. He's being a holster for this guy. He's holding this guy's gun. Not smart, because you're taking all the risk. But, you know, people want to be down. And that that's also a dojo move. You're doing this for this person. It's not yours. It's not yours. You maybe get to use it. And if you do use it, you're going to have to pay him, get him back another one. But anyway, so he's holding the shit for this guy. Fast forward maybe like a month or two later, this dude in this clique is beef with another dude from another clique. They're in the day room. They go in and they're going at it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And um, it's getting heated. So now people from this side is involved, people from this side is involved, but these two is, is, is going into it. Now my boy, Trini, he's not down officially with this dude's clique. He's just cool with this one guy. So now as they're going on and on and on, the day room is full of people, and on both sides it's yelling, and it's frothing at the mouth, they're they going through it. And Duke just looks at him and is like, yo, son, get my gun. In front of everybody. So now he's on the spot. So now he has to go get this guy's gun because it's his gun. But everybody's going to see you do it. But what's he going to do? You know, you signed up for this once you took it. So he goes, he gives it to the guy, and he gets it and has to give it to him in front of everybody. These dudes are beefing, they get ready to go at it. Nothing really happens, but the opposite team saw that. Like, all right, cool. So shit died down. Me and, me and Trini, we would go to program. We had air conditioning class. We would go through air conditioning refrigeration. We hit that shit every day. Like, we was in different dorms. we meet up and, and, and spin the yard and go to the, to the class. So maybe like two, three weeks later, one of us was late. Most likely him because I'm always on time. But most likely he was late. So um, I'm going. I'm there. And I don't see him. And I hear him like, yo, son, your man got touched. Touched is, you know, cut. Like, what you mean? He's like, yo, he was walking to the um, program. And then, rakata, dudes just caught him. Open them. Give them telephone. Telephones are cut from here to here. I'm not trying to mark myself. But um, I said they got him. Spun, went to the infirmary. It's because dudes is like, oh, you supplying this dude with weapons to go at our man? So we getting you. So they waited. They got him. And um, after that, you know, went to the infirmary and got transferred about it. There. I never seen him again. That's another dojo move. He got used as a holster. Dudes wasn't protecting him because he's not down with this clique. And look what happened to him. So my advice to any and everybody out there that, that wants to be down with a certain clique, whatever, if you're not part of the team, you're not part of the team. Dudes just tap you on the shoulder, go downstairs and get me a cigarette from somebody. Like, you're not part of the team. You're just a dole. Stand tall. Like, no. Don't fuck with them. Don't do it. If you're scared, then I guess you got no choice. If you're scared, then you shouldn't be in jail in the first place. You shouldn't be doing crimes. But anyway, that's just a story about being a doja and um, the consequences of it. The first story, he seems like he's happy with it. He gets to smoke once in the blue after stuffing his ass full of balloons. So be it. Second dude, it didn't turn out that right for him at all. But anyway, my name is Scandal. Thanks for checking me. You have a great day.